Okay, so we're on Delta Math and I'm showing you how to do these problems about um, learning how to graph and interpret linear functions. So this says a small town has two local high schools. High school A currently has 500 students and is projected to grow by 25 students each year. High school B has 350 students and is projected to grow by 50 students each year. A represents the number of students in high school A in T years. B represents the number of students in B after T years. Graph each function and determine after how many years T, the number of students in both high schools would be the same. So you look at the graph, the x-axis is number of years, so that's T. And number of students enrolled goes up. So you gotta think um, about how this should look. This is also an exercise in learning how to graph. High school A currently has 500 students. So T is time and we're at time zero. So 500 students at time zero is going to be there for your first graph. And we haven't placed our second point, so we don't know where it's gonna go. But you put this point at five, zero, 500. So at time zero, when we start, there's 500 students enrolled. It's growing by 25 students each year. So what that means is basically after one year, it would be 25 more than 500. So up here, after two years, it would be another 25. After three years, it would be another 25. After four years, it'd be another 25. And you can move your cursor, you know, if I went like this, then that's two years I gained 300 students, which would be a lot faster than we want, right? Because if I did this, then two years later, it went up by 300. Essentially, this is slope, right? Come on, let me get out of this. Oh my gosh. It says click a line to delete it. but it is not letting me delete. <sighs> well, this sucks because now I have to erase the whole problem. Okay, this is the same problem, but with uh, different numbers. Okay. So this one has 250 and it's going by 100. So 250 to start with, and after one year, it should be 100 more. So you go one year over and up 100, 250 to 350. That's just rise over run, right? 100 over one. And you can go one over and up another 100 to 450, makes the same line. So at any one of these, once you go one up, two up, one over, two up, you can click and you've made a line. And that represents high school A currently has 250 students growing by 100 each year. Any questions thus far? That's what that line represents. So the second line, high school B starts at 450 and grows by 50 each year. So it starts out with more, but then it's growing slower. So it starts out with 450, and then each year grows by 50. So after one year, it goes up by 50 from 450 to 500. After two years, another 50, three years, another 50, et cetera. So you have these two graphs, the first one, that um, starts at 250 is high school A. Second one starts at 450 is high school B. And then what we wanna know is determine the interval of years for which high school A will have more students than high school B. So you know at first, oops, okay. At first high school A has fewer than B, right? A has 250, B has 450. After a year, A has 350, B has 500, still has fewer. Two years, A has 450, B has 550. Three years, A has 550, B has 600. And then four years, they both have 650. And after that, high school A starts pulling ahead, right? After five years, A has 750 and B has 700. 
So right here where they meet at four years, after that, A has more because A is above B. So we go down here and say high school A has more students than high school B when T is greater than four years. You're never gonna do years per student or students per year. This is just making sure you have the right units. So when T is five, we see that high school A has more. When T is six, high school A has more. When T is seven, high school A has more forever because high school A is getting bigger faster. So high school A has more students than high school B when T is greater than four years. And then you click submit answer. It says, are you sure? You say yes. And it has this beautiful green check mark. Bonus, it actually has a whole explanation, more so than I think is really necessary, honestly, of why your answer is right or wrong. Then it has your final answer and the solution you put. So if you got it wrong, you could see the difference between your answer and their answer. So we go to new problem and here's a different one. Skylar is deciding between two landscaping companies for her place of business. Company A charges 50 an hour and a 100 equipment fee. Company B charges 25 an hour and a 200 equipment fee. A is the amount company A would charge, B is the amount company B would charge. So again, this is something where like A has a smaller initial cost, right? 100 versus 200, but then the hourly rate is larger. And so at some point one is gonna get more expensive than the other. So you start off, you're paying a hundred dollars just for the equipment. So before you even work any, you already owe them a hundred dollars. And that's at T equals zero before any work just for the equipment. $50 per hour. So that means after one hour, we want to go up $50. So one, two, out there from 100 to 150. After two hours, go up another 50 to 200. Three hours, another 50 to 250. Four hours, another 50 to 300, etc. I could have put my cursor down on any of these spots and it would have made the same line. Okay. Company B charges 25 per hour and a 200 equipment fee. So before you even get it started, you owe them $200 for equipment, but they only charge 25 an hour. So after one hour, it only goes up to 25, 225, two hours, 250, three hours, 275. Good afternoon, efforts, pardon the interruption. At this time, we will practice a shelter tornado. Okay, drill. whatever. Four hours, Again, Leopard, 300, five hours, 325, et cetera. Andrew. I don't have any students in my classroom at this moment, so I don't need to do anything. They have some announcement going. And all teachers and staff away from glass windows out into the hallway. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to do all that. Um, all right, so <sighs> here we've got our two lines. The one that starts at 100 is company A. The one that starts at 200 is company B. And now we know our question is, graph each function, determine the number of hours that would make the cost of each company the same. So for them to have the same cost, right? Here they have different costs. Here they have different costs. Here they have different costs. They're the same wherever they meet. So this is where they meet at $300. You get the same amount of work from both of them if you pay $300 for $300. And how many hours of work that is? Four. So determine number of hours that would make them cost the same. Well, if you got four hours of work, either one would cost $300. So the answer is four hours. Just one sec. Okay. All right. Three. Yeah. 
Okay, here's a good one. Olivia is deciding between two parking garages. Garage A charges initial fee of $8 to park plus two per hour. Garage B charges an initial fee of four to park plus three per hour. So garage A, you gotta pay $8 just to get in. So before you even park, you pay $8. And then two per hour. So after one hour, it goes up two. After two hours, it goes up another two. After three hours, it goes up another two, et cetera. Garage B charges initial fee of four to park plus three per hour. So you start off lower, but after one hour, you're all the way up to seven. Two hours, you're up to 10. Three hours, you're up to 13, et cetera. So this says, determine which garage would be cheaper if Olivia needs to park for five hours. So we're looking at T equals five here. We follow it up. Whichever garage is cheaper is the one that line that we get to first. So at five hours, this one costs $18 and the other costs $19. Okay, because that's where they hit. So the one that's 18 is the one that starts at eight. So that's garage A. So garage A is cheaper than garage B when parking for five hours. And like I said, garage A is 18, garage B is 19. That's where they come out. So it's $1 cheaper. All right. I'm getting all of these right, aren't I? Clever. Okay, so I'm going to 